Hi, as I promised, I'm finally making my way through the tutorial request list and today we have a tutorial on BNM sit downs or BNM flawless layouts. And this is something that's been requested quite a while ago and I would figure I would do it anyway since it hasn't really been done before and I still sometimes see people struggling with this stuff. So I don't really have too much to say over here really. I think we will all just figure that out while we're building our stuff here. Excuse me for using the extended track of the in-game thing right now. I don't even think I have a BM sit down or flawless um, CTR so that's kind of... This is w what we have to deal with at the moment basically. So yeah, actually I already placed that station but I would like to tiny talk a tiny bit about that. Um, I usually raise my stations about four um, tiles. Don't ever place them on the ground. Stations are are always raised um, to some level usually it is about two meters so um, two times uh, raising it two times four times sometimes six t six times that's about the height that you want to have uh, as you may have noticed I didn't um, name any alt numbers but though you can do that that also results in an odd placement and that's sometimes kind of hard to work with uh, for the length of the station I would go somewhere between five and seven tiles um, both for practical reasons and making the station for that. I, I always like to make mine six tiles. We don't often go straight into the uh, lift hill. This is something that really does happen in real life, but I think over here it might actually be better to just kind of move this thing. So over here I would like to start the lift hill. I always like to play some brakes just before that, uh, so, just so the car can slow down, but also so you can add that little motor underneath it where the lift hill is going to go up and just at the lift hill. There really isn't too much to this thing yet. Um, it doesn't really matter what you're going to do at that point. And as you may have noticed, I turned on the heights for the track. And even though this seems like a pretty useless thing to do, it can sometimes actually be very handy, um, as I'm going to show in a second right here. For example, right now we're on 26 meters, and this is a very common height for lift hills in Rollercoaster Second 3, since this means you can have a steep slope, have it end in a way like this, and have it just not yet close the ground, um, reach the ground, um, since we don't really want the track to touch the ground, but we also don't want it to levitate too high. Like, this is about the right height that the track should um, be from the ground usually. And when you have a drop that's this high, you can kind of just make a small coaster, you can add a loop like that, and as you can see, that is a pretty good height to, stop, to start doing stuff like that. It really just comes down to what kind of height you want to have. You can also just kind of go up over here. I think that should be good too. Actually, no, that's one too high. Um, basically, you're always kind of looking for that exact spot in height where as you go down, you just levitate two meters above the ground. That is right about the right height. Um, now looking at this, this is still kind of high. I wouldn't want to make it too large for this tutorial. This is definitely a height that you can do. Uh, for example, if you want to build a really, really high coaster, then um, that is actually not the right height. No, if you want to build a really high BNM sit down, this is about the height that you want to go for, uh, about 42 meters, since now you can go down like that and start off with large loops or um, large um, zero G rolls. Um, actually, not that yet. Uh, but I would like to go down just a tiny bit, go back to 26 just for the sake of this tutorial. That was just a tiny bit about the heights of Lift Hill. So it really just comes down to what like how high you want to make your roller coaster but make sure it is at such a height where you can add a smooth drop that also comes down to a very um, reasonable height at the end something which many people do is also just kind of curve it around like that and then at the looping that is actually a very common thing um, which also has a perfect height for that um, so that's just stuff that you can try out and you may have noticed that I added a little dip around here Which is the pre-drop um, now if you don't know pre-drop is a very small drop before the final um, Really big drop and <laughs> actually it's the first drop before the big drop comes just to um, get rid of some tension on the cable Because otherwise you kind of stress the cables too much if you go down right away and the car would pull the cable down um, but this is actually only something to worry about when you're building an old B&M sit down. Um, I know this this sounds a little bit silly, but um, the first B&M sit downs, the early generation ones, always had this little pre-drop to get rid of that tension on the cable. But the newest ones don't have that. They don't need that anymore. So it really depends on how old you want to make your ride. Like if you want to put a B&M sit down in a park, that's pretty old. Otherwise, and just it. it 
just kind of depends on the story of your park. I always like to have no pre-drop since really they kind of look a bit silly sometimes. So I would say that with a curve like this, it is actually something that I really like to have. Um, so yeah, I think right now is it's actually a good time to start adding a curve. So that is the first drop, very important thing in coaster building. Um, at this point, you don't really need the heights too much. Um, I always just find them kind of distracting. Um, so yeah, first drop, and usually what b &Ms do is you have the lift hill, you get the first drop, a couple of elements, and then you either get a mid-course break run, or you get like the ending of the ride. And it kind of just depends on how large your ride is, whether you want to have a mid-course break run or not. A mid-course break run is when it kind of goes up, and has a couple of breaks and then goes down again. This really depends on, well, both the speed of your ride, like if you want to slow it down, you would have to add one of these things. If it's a really large ride, you have to add mid-course brake runs just for safety reasons, most likely. But if you have a small ride like this, if it's just about 26 meters high, I wouldn't worry about that too much. Like only add a brake run on such a very small coaster if you really need one. Uh, in any case, I'll just kind of Kind of continue with this. Usually what b &Ms have for the first couple of elements before they go into the brake run or the ending of the ride is they do a couple of inversions, some um, other small elements like overbanked curves and things like that. But no helixes yet. Uh, in the first half of the ride you want to stay away from things like um, the large helix that rarely ever happens. Like it happens on like a couple of stand-up coasters that b has made, but then their higher helixes, it's kind of complicated, but it's nothing, it's, it's not really something that I would recommend to do. Just keep it to the higher elements and um, things like that. So now there's a couple of things that most b &Ms have in the first part before the um, MCBR, the mid-course brake run, is there is a looping that you can add. You can add a Cobra roll, which is a very common element, uh, which is when you have a looping, and then you get a corkscrew, another corkscrew in the different direction, and then another half loop. That's a very common element, uh, but something that's also quite common on the first half of a B&M sit down is a zero G roll. I don't think it's too good of an idea to add them over here because as you can see, it is a very large element and it really doesn't fit in the first half of the ride. Um, usually I go with like a looping, a cobra roll and something else for the first half of the ride. Uh, so for this ride, I would actually say a small little fun element and then go into the Cobra roll. That would seem like a pretty fun thing to do. I'm really just making uh, stuff up in the spot right here. So I'm very sorry if this is going to turn out into like actually a terrible roller coaster. Hopefully that is not the case, but just kind of winging it as well here. Also, by the way, I just showed it with a small corkscrew, but Every single roller coaster good 3 player would tell you to not use the small corkscrews ever. They are very, very unsmooth. They hurt. They have killed people in the past. Don't use them. The large corkscrews are a lot better and so just kind of more realistic. As you can see, this is a very large and spread out Cobra roll, but it is a lot smoother and better in general than having that very, not so very smooth, very small corkscrew. Um, now this would actually seem like a perfect place to add a mid-course brake run. <laughs> like, no, I wouldn't do that. I can't do that. Uh, no, we're not going to do that. Um, I need to find a way to somehow get back to where I just was. I don't think this is really the best of ideas that I could have done here. Now uh, let's see. Can I do something like that? Uh, because of course I'm gonna have to head back into the station after this. So I have to be careful with what I do over here. Um, that would actually look pretty good, I think. Um, maybe a small zero G roll. That's also something that could be done. Um, yeah, one thing to say about B&M sit downs as well as B&M flawlesses is that they are very formulaic. They really aren't too unique, and they're kind of simple. Which is also something that I think some people like to bash B&M on is that their tracks are very similar. But even though this means that you know there is a very certain kind of style that you have to follow when it comes to the layout. It is always cool to just add, kind of add your own elements into it, as long as you kind of keep that basic structure of lift hill, first half of the coaster, um, and then either a brake run or not, and then the second half of the coaster where it's kind of slower, has some helixes and smaller inversions. Um, but we'll get to that in a tiny second, as soon as I find a good way to get to the other side without this looking very awkward in the end, because it isn't really working out too well right now. 
Um, like, this is not very smooth. Would I do something like that? Um, you know, that's the question right here. Um, I generally like to not use these things, um, where, when I'm talking about using a heal like that, um, to go straight and then go gentle again, because as you can see, it is a very unsmooth and sudden drop like that. I always like to just use the one that goes down like that, which is a lot smoother, and I like to avoid ha having to do this thing by all means, seriously. Uh, one thing that you can, for example, do to make that a tiny bit less jerky is to, for example, at the bank like that. Um, which, although it looks a bit dodgy, I find looks a tiny bit better than doing something like this. Because as you can see, this really does get a tiny bit not very smooth here. But that is kind of up to your own um, opinion and ideas about that. You could probably do some other stuff as well, but I always kind of like to do this as well. Um... In any case, this is still not really working out over here. I was hoping that this would somehow give me a good looking hill, but no such thing. <laughs> it's still really, it goes down way too fast. Um, so yeah, I need to find something else to do over here. I mean, the lift hill, that's the issue. <laughs> the lift hill right here is right in the middle of whatever I want to try. Uh, when you're stuck at some given point, just kind of add some slight alterations in the track. You don't have to completely redo anything, everything. Like, what I could have done, in, for instance, is just kind of have moved this thing and done the Cobra Roar as well, but just kind of do it in a different way. But that is not going to work out because of that, so I'm actually going to move this loop and see if I can do it like that. Um, because seriously, it is a bit of a shame to just re- to just remove your entire layout or whole parts of your layout when something doesn't really work out. You can always just remove or change a earlier element and then just rebuild rebuild it in a same way that you did it before. Uh, which is kind of like this. Some small changes, but we still have these same elements, but we still got somewhere else. Um, so when you get stuck somewhere, you don't really have to remove the entire thing. Anyway, I need to kind of hurry up here. I'm taking way too much time to say stuff. Um... Yeah, I was hoping that I could maybe get, like, a smooth overbanked turn, but that is probably not going to happen over here. Nope, <laughs> that is definitely not going to work. Uh, let's see then. Um, like, one thing that would be amazing is if this would fit. Which it does kind of look like it could happen. Like, honestly. That doesn't even look that bad. Um... Yeah, I want to do something like this and not go over there anymore since b and sit-downs as well as b and flawless is, once again, I, those two things are usually quite compact. They're not spaghetti ball <laughs> compact, but they are quite compact, especially compared to hyper coasters and the like. So always just kind of keep your, um, yeah, always just kind of keep them small. And uh, don't get too far away from the station. That's one really big tip that I would give. Never get too far away from the station. Um, but this is not really working out too well, <laughs> and the game says that this is allowed, but I would not allow this. Uh, this does not look like enough clearance. Um, if you are worried about whether it's going to give something enough clearance or not, you can always just kind of test the ride. Um, just play it and see how much room is left and whether a track will actually um, chop people's heads off. And that doesn't work because I'm an idiot. Um, hold on. Um... You need to leave that mode for that. Only then can you actually pause it. Um, yeah, and though that does look pretty safe, I don't think I would do that. Seriously, people could reach out their arms and touch the track if they were very tall. Uh, this is slightly too close to it, I would say. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Uh, not to mention that over here it's pretty close as well. Um, ouch, that is quite painful. It's <laughs> really quite painful. Um, man, what the hell am I even going to do with this? Like, I'm seriously, I'm pretty stuck over here. I don't wanna, we don't wanna make this tutorial too long just because I'm stuck over here. Am I just going to do it? Am I just going to do it? Like the clearance test. It passed the clearance test, and if a roller coaster passes the clearance test, that you can do it if you really so desire. Um, eh, fuck it. <laughs> I'm gonna try it anyway. I'm not gonna stretch this out too long. Um, like I can add a 0 0 over here, but I don't know about that speed. Um, as you can see, having that testing while you work on it can actually be really handy, since 
it doesn't even make that cobra roll. Um, this is not a realistic amount of trains though. Um, realistic amount of cars though, um, which is quite important as well. Like you need a realistic amount of cars. Um, otherwise it'll slow down much more, but yeah, this definitely doesn't make it. Um, there is a remedy for that though, <laughs> a pretty easy remedy. Uh, we're just gonna work this thing into the ground. Yeah, whatever. And this might look stupid, but you can always just kind of cover this up with um, train stuff on the sides, and it's really not too much of an issue, I would say. Uh, definite, you definitely can get away with doing stuff like this. Um, hell, many B&Ms do this. Many B&Ms kind of go into the terrain and just kind of have some small walls on the sides, so that should be fine. Um, let's see now. Some half loop, here we go. And in a way, this also made my job a tiny bit easier since I can just kind of go down like that and then go into the latter part of the ride uh, where we might actually have a corkscrew like right here already. Might want to do that, though that is pretty soon, isn't it? Um, yeah, that is too soon. I would say just one more of these and then we should be good to go, honestly. Um... Now, I don't want to have any jerky transitions. Um, generally, what you'd want to have is, um, if you come out of a curve, let's say, for instance, we are banked in this direction, and if you bank it that way, don't do that when you want to have a corkscrew in this direction. Um, since, as you can see, it's going to bank in that way, it's going to bank back, but then it's going to bank back in the same direction once again. It's going to be really jerky. Uh, if you add a corkscrew in that direction, it's going to be really smooth, but... Uh, you're really going to have to fit that in well. Um, but what you don't really need to worry about is... Like, over here we have a curve that banks in that direction. But I also want to have a corkscrew that goes in the same direction. Uh, this would be really jerky and painful, and we don't really want to have that. Uh, also, that speed is perfect. That is about the speed that you're looking for. Um, could be slightly faster. Now, that's actually alright. Yeah, that's alright. Um, but as you can see... It rides it all right, and it goes through the corkscrew, albeit a tiny bit slow. Um, the thing just is that it's jerky over here, so I usually just like to end the curve like that, since that means that you don't really have too much of a bank at the end. And then if you add a large corkscrew in that direction, you should be fine, honestly. Um, now, I'm looking for something that can end the ride in a nice way, uh, since... Right after this element, I would say, is when we start with the latter part of the ride. No more loopings, no more cobra rolls, no more zero G rolls, just helixes, bunny hops, and um, corkscrews, things like that. Uh, small airtime hills and curves is usually what you have at the latter end of the ride. Um, a helix could be kind of cool, but I don't think that would fit too well on this ride, honestly. Um, but yeah, it should be working pretty nicely over here. That's all right. Still kind of worried about that that speed though. That is slightly too slow. Um, yeah, can I do something about that? Is it a good idea to try to do something about that? Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm just gonna work this thing into the terrain. I would no, you can't do that. I don't want to touch the ground. Usually they don't do that, so I'm just gonna have to live with this. Um, we're just gonna end the right like that. That should be all right. Just a couple of small curves at the end, and that should finish it off nicely. Uh, we always want to leave some room at the end of the station just for the brake run, as well as um, the thing where it saves the cars, uh, which is something that I'll go to in a tiny bit. Um, it should be alright, honestly. Not the best thing, but... Yeah, that's too many curves. That's many weird curves <laughs> in a row. Don't really want to have that. Um... Something like that could work. Probably, but then again, not really, does it? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into something completely different since this part of the layout just doesn't work. And yeah, this is part of making layouts. Just trial and error all over the place right there. Um, a corkscrew over here could fit. It's not coming too close to the station. I would always say save at least one tile away from the station since at the station you're going to want to save some space for the station itself, maybe even a queue or something. This is about the um, distance that I would like to have from the station at most. 
Um, so yeah, this should be pretty safe. Uh, now, after we do this, we can actually have some funny curve action without really yeah, having too many problems with that. Only issue is, you know, it, <laughs> it kind of is a tiny bit small. It's a bit of a sudden ending right there. Um, so yeah, what do I do with that? Uh, I don't even really know here. Um, thing is, you could say, but Silverat, what is wrong? I mean, it hooks up perfectly. You can go up and do that. So there's two problems with this. Uh, there's not enough space for the brake section at the end, as well as the transfer track that we would like to have. Um, you generally want a pretty large straight piece of track before it enters the station. And also small hills like this just before the station is something that you want to completely avoid. Um, so we're not going to quite do that. Um, yeah, I need to find a different way back into the station, honestly. Um, I don't know how well this could work, though. There's not enough room for that. Um, ouch. <laughs> this is an issue. This really is an issue. Um, and this was already curved, wasn't it? Uh, different idea, then. Uh, this would have been great. If only it wasn't too small. Damn it. No, none of that is actually going to work out. Um, I would like to have a helix though at the end. That would be amazing. Um, so yeah, if you're stuck like that and you don't really know what to do, bunny hops are the thing that you can add. Just small airtime hills. They're fun. They look pretty good. And it just means that you save a tiny bit more space and we can go into that direction. Um, have some curves. Have a helix up rather than having that, you know, very unsmooth little thing and unbank it and there is enough space left for the brakes and the transfer and the transfer track uh, so i would say that concludes our track over here yeah i think that's pretty good uh one last one last test and then it should be all right uh, do we want to do a pov do we really want to do that <laughs> damn it um i suppose that's good though yeah I'll just kind of test how smooth it is um just throw out your wheeze and the man boobs are jiggling and yeah this looping actually it's an all right speed something that i would like to say is that while you're on the ride sometimes it almost seems like the speeds are different so me at least sometimes when i'm on the roller coaster it almost feels like it's a tiny bit slower than when you look at it from a distance and also something to keep in mind is that in roller coaster Gun 3 um coasters tend to look slower than in real life like real life coasters do slow down quite a bit in their inversions they aren't really quite as fast but many people tend to make their rides in roller coaster Gun 3 really fast since it looks like a realistic speed um but Kind of keep in mind that in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, it's going to look a tiny bit slower than it would have been in reality. Um, not really, but I don't know. It just I just kind of have that impression, and many other people do too, at least that I know of. Um, so that's something small to keep in mind. And last thing is the color scheme. And this really comes down to whatever you feel like is a good idea. Um, but something that you can do, which I'm not a fan of, um, not really a fan of, but sometimes I do it too, honestly. It's a really handy thing, is just look up color schemes on the internet. Uh, there is a really handy website for that. Um, it's called colorcombos.com. There are other websites as well. I'm not advertising this website or anything, um, but I just kind of like color combos. But there's some other stuff as well. But color combos, at the in the middle of the page, they have like their latest color combos and popular community combos. And that's where some really awesome colors are. Um, but if you've like seen many roller coasters and um, have done it quite often before, as in, um, coloring roller coasters, oops, that was kind of awkward, um, then it shouldn't really be too much of a problem. A very common color scheme is to have um, white supports. Um, damn it, this is in-game color thing, works different. Um, yeah, where's the white supports even? Uh, th that makes these supports white. Um, and yeah, white supports basically and a red or blue track, which is quite common, um, that many people like to do. It's very, I don't know, it's very standard though. I'm not really a big fan of it, but I would definitely just recommend checking out color combos. Also, what I should, I would recommend is, don't be me, 
get uh, get CP Cisco's BM retexture since that thing changes the colors, um, which means that you can change the color of the supports without changing the color of these, um, what are they called, cross ties? Something like that. These little middle parts in the track, and that is really something that's really handy since we kind of don't want that to be the same color. Also, it looks really awesome overall. But yeah, that's it. Um, I'm just going to take a color combo from... Uh, our color combo uh, thing right there from the <laughs> colorcombos.com. Um, they're saying that pur yeah, that purple might actually go really well with this color. Um, not on this roller coaster though. No, I would say maybe something like aqua. Um, aqua and purple is a really amazing color combo that I know of. But yeah, that's pretty much how that works. Um, I've really been going off topic for the last couple of minutes. I'm so sorry about that. This is basically the standard B&M sit down kind of recipe. This is how you cook a real B&M sit down. Um, remember, this is definitely not the best B&M sit down that I've ever built. There's definitely a couple of problems with it, I think. Um, it could be a tiny bit more compact and things, but this is the basic recipe. Have a lift hill, have a couple of um, standard elements, some larger hills, some loopings, some overbanked curves, some cobra rolls, and then you enter the later section, the um, latter half of the roller coaster, where you just keep it to very small zero G rolls, corkscrews, bunny hills, and helixes. And that's how it works. As long as you follow that formula, then you should be pretty fine. So, Thanks for watching guys, I hope you've learned something from this tutorial and I'll see you all next time or something, hopefully, maybe, probably, I don't know. In any case, goodbye.